Hello, this is an Ibach baby grand piano made in 1930, 145 and a half centimetres long, that's four foot nine and a half centimetres, so, sorry inches, so it is a really short piano and we're so pleased to get this into stock because Ibach rank alongside the very best baby grand piano makers, um, Art Deco piano, as we'll see, we'll look over the case for a minute, just want to zero in here on the keys, which are perfect ivories, um, which is very encouraging. There's Ibark, the place where it was made. And uh, we're going to have a look at the rest of the case just to just to admire it, really. Um, it's been fully restored, and we'll see all the detail of restorations really, really beautifully done. But um, let's have a look at the top of the piano. This is a double prop, by the way, so we've got it on the shorter prop, which is a very nice way to have a piano if you've got it at home. Most people don't have it on the, t the high prop, but I can recommend the short prop. It also discourages people from putting things on top of the piano, which can obviously, uh, if you get liquid on top of the piano, that's a real uh, problem. So let's have a look at the all of the case and the inside too. The piano has been finished in a kind of satin, very appropriate finish for the style of the piano, really. Um, Walnut was popular in the 1930s and this uh, is one of the nicest that I've come across and uh, re really interesting veneer. Beautiful colour. I'm not sure how the colour will look on the video but it's a nice warm yellow sort of golden colour really. There's the long side of the piano. Um, sorry this is in our front of our half of our workshop area so um, sorry about the display background really but um, Hopefully you can cast dry across if you if you want a, an Art Deco piano. I don't think there's a more beautiful one than a, an Ibach. But um, as, a, as you know, we, we're really looking for the musical side of the piano more than the cosmetics. But it, so it's just a, a bonus when we get something in that looks, looks so special. Now the inside of the piano has also been done with great integrity cosmetically. And uh, it has new tuning pins, large tuning pins. I haven't changed the tuning block. Uh, but they're really tight tuning pins, so that's encouraging. And the soundboard's been shimmed, as you would expect, um, if you're a restorer, and you'll know exactly what that means. The, the, the shims are these, if you see that line there, that's that was filled where the soundboard had opened up over the years, which is very common, uh, very acceptable work, and this is exactly what we would do too. So the frame colour's very, very integral too. I think that's almost the original frame colour. It's tried to match every everything as it was originally and um, just uh, in every way uh, an excellent restoration. Now it's difficult to get a short piano to sound really special and Ibart managed to do it, they did quite a few pianos uh, in the 30s. And they're excellent bass strings. So on a short piano that's uh, that's really as good as you can expect. But around the break point here, let's have a listen. It's very difficult to get that right on a short piano. Well, that needs voicing, that hammer. These are brand new Arbel hammers. We'll, we'll look at the mechanics in a minute. But if you listen, you can hear some things that need working on there. There's a damper there that's a bit slow. But tone-wise, it's really as good as any small grand piano can be expected to be. Um, it ranks alongside Blutner. I mentioned recently that Blutner is uh, one of our favourites, so they're much more common. So it's not often we get Ibark grand pianos. Sorry, I meant Ibark small grand pianos. And there's lots of Ibark grand pianos, but not, not many of these ones. There's a, reason, a few, but not enough uh, compared, not compared to Blutner. Uh, now, I just want to look at these split wedges here. Uh, this is where they run out. Uh, I think it needs extra split wedges here. If we have a listen, we'll see. You see what I mean? That's at the back end. The front end is flat. So the front end is flat. That one just needs regulating. It's not quite damping as well as that. So they should all be damping like that. You hear, hear there that that's where the split wedge runs out. So that could do with a, a split wedge at the back. And. They just need a bit of regulation to get them damping a bit better too. Now what I think is the most significant uh, work we'll need to do is, is the, the down weight here. And that is 63 as maximum down weight I've got. It should be 50 um, or even 48, 49 if you want a lighter touch. But we have a problem here because that's with 63 and that's still not going down. 
So I had to add my pound coin at the bottom here and just about managing to get it with hitting underneath that it's go down and uh, the keys are varied so let's try another one. Let's go further up. So let's just see here and that one, there we are, that is slightly lighter so uh, that's that's acceptable. It should be slightly lighter in the treble. It's not, I don't mean acceptable, sorry, it's really 71 grams, that's uh, over 40% heavier than it should be. And the base end here, um, again, it's just going down just about with uh, 71, over 71 grams. So really far too heavy and uh, not really acceptable if you, unless you really, really want to work out with your fingers. Now looking at the action, it's been fitted with arbor hammers um, uh, which is fine and they've been voiced, you can see little marks on the hammer, so um, many good aspects here. It's just the weighting is uh, is really 40% much more than it should be and that's far too heavy, so we're going to have to do something about that. Now the hammers have hardly been used since it was done. We, we haven't, I haven't marked the hammers, but as you've seen in previous videos that we probably marked those um, with carbon paper so we can see. Um, hope, they are lined up straightly to the strings but just to get a voice to the unicorder. Now to, to decrease the weight we need to put weights in front of the front keys or hopefully we can manage to do that. We may have to change those hammers, they might just be too heavy. Um, just lifting these up to see what kind of weights are inside. My colleague who does the weighting is, is, and our chief technician isn't here at the moment, it's early in the morning. Um, but I was very keen to look at this piano because um, I was excited by Ibach grand pianos. Now we can see weights in there, whether there's enough room to add enough weight to bring it down by 20 grams basically, which is an incredible amount to bring the, have to bring it down. Um, I just wonder if we're going to have to change the hammers. So we're going to have to look into that and uh, see if we can manage to put enough weights. But there was already two in there. Um, this is a sharp key and you can't really put one near to this felt. Uh, we can't put one in between I don't think here. We could put one there but it's not going to make enough difference so uh, I'm really concerned here that we're going to have to change the hammers which is obviously a major job. We've got to re-regulate the whole piano. Um, so hammer, hammer changing, not, it's not just the cost of the hammers, it, it takes so much time really to do. But um, generally speaking, we, the piano hasn't been finished off then with weighting and also if we look at the uh, the action here I notice the the springs also just I've generally weighted this this C here so if it, as it checks it springs upwards like that which is correct um, and this is B and it's not going upwards at all so a lot of finishing off work to do here the set off also this is this button here uh, we had to regulate that if you can watch the B and the C again the C sets off a lot later. We'll look at it inside the piano as well. Um, and also the drop screw, which is this little screw there, that needs regulating too. That's the height it ends up at after you release it. And you can see there, uh, they're ending up at different heights. Sorry about the focus. So if you look at the B and the C inside the piano, there's C. It springs up when I release the back check and the rests, as near as you can get it, and working properly is a sort of rule for that. So that's how far it is. we can get it on this one. And sets off there, right next to the string. Let's look at the B. So if we go up, sets off much earlier and uh, doesn't go up when we release the back check. So let's look at the two together as C and B. And really that makes it feel heavier as well and also can't control it for soft playing. A uh, quirk of Ibach Grands, as we've mentioned on other videos, uh, another video recently, uh, it, it uh, shifts to the left when you press the unicorder a quarter pedal. And of course that's, that's fine, you just have to re remember that and when you put the action back in, all the springs on that side too. So that's an assessment of Ibach four foot nine and a half baby grand piano, just come into stock, made in 1930. Um, now cosmetically it's just wonderful. Um, and the work's been done with great integrity, but the touch when you play is far, far too heavy. As I say, 40% heavier than it should be. So very hard work and need a lot of finishing off. Key weighting or unfortunately we may have to change the hammers or uh, maybe we can take some weight off the hammers. 
You'll have to see, my, my colleague's not here so it's early in the morning, so he'll have a look at the piano when he comes in and we'll make a decision on what we can do. There's a great clarity of tone. So it's just un uncomfortable to play at the moment, otherwise I'd be really enjoying this because the tone is so good. It needs a little bit of voicing, but basically, I think once we've finished off, it's going to be one of the best small grand pianos you can possibly get. Because the bass isn't very strong being a small grand, but They've done a very good job in trying to get the best possible. It's about four or five beats flat at the moment. Um, I don't think it's, it's been just restored in 2016, by the way, and uh, just drops in pitch. I don't think it's been tuned since it was restored. Um, and very stable, very, very tight tuning pins. Thank you very much for listening.